Three months before a life-altering event, a woman had the lines in her hand read to learn more about her life, her health, and who might be watching over her. In retrospect, the things that she would be told during this hour would provide her information that she would need to learn to live her new life. I met Shane about six years ago. At that time, I was in a committed relationship with someone else, and so he became a casual acquaintance. Um, I saw him off and on, but I never learned a, a lot about him. All I really knew was that he was likable, and he seemed to have several friends. A few years later, I went through a really hard breakup. I ran into Shane, and before I knew it, we were practically inseparable. After only a few months together, he proposed to me, and it was in the heat of the moment. The circumstances of our engagement should have been a warning sign to me, but at the time I was feeling really unwanted, and around him I felt really needed. It was not long before Skylar would choose to live with this man. The pair would create dreams together. She felt she had finally found the man she wanted to share her family with. In her wildest dreams, Shane would be her partner, someone to help raise her three daughters. Much of the time, their home was a happy one. She would not have thought a darkness would creep into her life that would forever change her. His past would catch up with her before it did him. My ex-husband was able to use Shane's criminal history as a means to try to take custody of my daughters. As time went on, the custody battle began to wear on me and Shane became increasingly estranged. I was fighting to keep my children while working to keep our relationship alive. I was his biggest advocate. I was unwilling to lose my faith in humanity and a person's ability to change. I fought to defend him. I wouldn't leave him. I believed we would be able to have all we were working for and I would come out the other side with custody of my children and a strong marriage with the man I loved. During this time, she went to see a hand reader. She would learn much in this visit. She found that her grandfather was likely watching over her. The events to come would be foreshadowed in this meeting. She told me she could see a line for my marriage and another that seemed to represent a poor relationship about one to two years long. I had no idea what she was talking about. Shane and I had been together only a little over a year at that time and I told her so. She said she could see a longer marriage line after that line, but that one was definitely a relationship line that was soon to end. Here the hand reader chose to move on. She knew she could not change the mind of a woman who desperately wanted her relationship to work. regardless of what the lines told. Little did any of them know she had hit the mark with deadly accuracy. The relationship was about to come to an end in much more than heartbreak. After months of the custody battle, Scholar started to see that Shane was behaving in more erratic ways. He seemed to be angry and secretive. He was critical of her daughters and he seemed to be constantly on it. She thought the two of them could try to have a relationship without living together. In her mind, she believed this would be best for everyone. About two weeks after that conversation, Shane called to tell me the kids weren't listening to him. The argument seemed trivial to me. I told him to let this roll off. The kids are fine. When I got home, he was angry and frustrated. I knew he needed to calm down. He was mad over typical kid behavior. One of my daughters said something to him, and then he swore at her. And in that moment, I knew the time had come for us to make drastic changes. I told him he had to leave. He left, and then he called me all night long. She agreed to see him the next day alone, despite the concerns of a caring friend. She could not imagine being unsafe with this man. She believed wholeheartedly that his recent behaviors were due to stress and fear of losing his newfound family. Even though he had been incredibly angry, I didn't believe it hurt me. At the time, I was ready to make a lot of compromises. I knew he had to move out, though. When I told my friend what had happened and that we'd be talking, she was really concerned. Despite the concerns of her most trusted friend, she agreed to see Shane on Friday. Her friend stated that she would be available no matter what, and she planned to check on her later. Upon his arrival, he asked what could be done to let him stay. No one could have predicted the horror he was about to create. I told him that was not going to happen. My already precarious custody was going to be impacted from his outburst at my daughter. There was no way I wanted someone living with them and caring for them who could or would ever speak to them that way. He stood up and I thought, okay, I guess, guess this is it. I thought he was gonna walk out of my life in that moment. With that edict ringing in his ears, he picked up his coat and turned to the door. Instead of leaving though, he turned back. In that moment, his face changed. 
where before there was hurt and sadness, maybe even regret, was now rage. The change in him was too rapid for her to process. I had never seen this side of him. He swung his fist connecting with the back side of her head, hard enough to stun. She was so shocked, she stayed where she was, unable to move or think. He was not done though. He lunged forward and pinned her to the couch. His hands were around her neck. She couldn't breathe, let alone fight back. She could only hear the loud pulse of her ears ringing as her body fought desperately for air. He took two deliberate steps back and I knew I had to move. I stood and walked out of the room, but he followed me. Months later, at a second visit to the hand reader, she would know why he had stepped back. Likely the only reason she is alive to tell the story. I don't know how long it lasted. The next thing I remember is Shane stepping back from me. He seemed to lean back in toward me and with the first clean breath I had, I said, stop, please stop. In the moments his hands were around her neck, her life escaping, someone knew she was not ready to leave. As his grasping hands attempted to steal her last breath, the force of her protector pitted its strength against Shane's rage. As quickly as had become a terrifying monster, he was back to himself. He tried to hug me and I flinched. He asked me to come sit with him. I began talk. to think in spurts. I knew I had to do all in my power not to provoke him. My life depended on it. I asked if he'd not touch me if I sat with him. She would later be told that she had sat with him for over an hour. Disassociated from all around her, she has little memory of that time. At one point, he bought her a cold cloth in a frightening attempt to fix the damage that he had done. This knowledge only came as she realized it was still in her hand when the police arrived much later. I remember my first clear thought. I must get him out of my house. I won't be safe until he's gone. I told him a friend was coming over and he shouldn't be there when she came. He agreed to leave, asking if he could come back though, asking if I would not tell my friend what had happened. My friend arrived minutes after he left. I'd only asked her to come, I hadn't told her why. As she came through the door, the words just came out of me. He choked me. I don't know what to do. She asked if I'd called the police, and when I told her I didn't know what to say to them, she gave me the words and comfort, and she stayed there with me. She did not know it at the time, but her friend was not the only sentinel in the room that night. She would come to realize that the hand reader had unwittingly foretold these events. She saw that the relationship was not long for this world, and she had identified the protector who was watching over this woman that night. Had her grandfather not stepped in, this woman's story would have ended much differently. Months later, he would make his presence known one more time. As her father stood in an empty warehouse at work, he would hear the voice of the angel who had protected his daughter. Skylar needs, he said, as clearly as if he were in the room. Thinking he was imagining things, he asked a co-worker if he had spoken. No one in the room had spoken. One more time, he would hear the disembodied voice, Skylar needs. There was no urgency, only care. Only time will tell me what my grandfather knows I need, but I trust him. He's always been there for me. Three months after the attack, she returned to the hand reader. At this visit, she learned of a new line in her hand. As the reader's eyes roamed her hand this second time, she would say, you have a line here. Yes, at 33, you have a distinct line from a guardian angel that is forming. 